Talking today to Ying Chan, who is the director of the China Media Project and director and professor of the Journalism and Media Studies Center in the University of Hong Kong. Ying Chan, tell me how the internet has developed in China and what scale it's reached. Uh, internet in China is very vibrant and growing very fast. As we're talking, there are at least 500 million internet users uh, in the country. And that's 40% penetration. That means there's so many, much room to grow. Uh, social media is growing. Uh, people are online, very much so. And how are they online? Are they online using mobile mainly, or is it using laptops and PCs? Uh, mobile is picking up very fast, especially in the tier two, tier three cities, rural areas, but even in the cities. So uh, there's a lot of uh, movement across uh, uh, mobile. People used to use uh, uh, inter access internet from cyber cafes, but now they have their own individual uh, devices. And what are they doing on the internet? Well, they do everything like shopping, uh, looking for information, uh, sharing information, and uh, access to news. And what impact has this had on the process of reporting and uh, journalism in China? Well, this is um, the internet is having a huge impact yeah. on the production of news and uh, news consumption. It has created a space for public discourse. Uh, for posting the stories that might be censored in the traditional media and uh, people are uh, posting the information online. And give me a couple of examples of how this is, in a sense, surfaced, surfaced information which might not otherwise have been seen. Uh, for instance, just not too long ago, there was a um, um, woman who was seven months pregnant in a small village in, uh, in China. Uh, she was forced to have an abortion by the local officials. Now, within a couple of days, that event was uh, written up, posted on the internet in one of the bulletin boards, and quickly spread. And people reposted the information, um, hundreds and thousands of people share in this information and discuss about it, protest and express their anger against it. And in a week, the local officials were forced to order an investigation, apologize, and suspend three officials uh, uh, involved in this uh, act. Um, without internet, this would not have happened. So it, officials are, on occasions, responsive to this information. It's not simply the information's out there, but people do things about it. Oh, oh, oh yes, they do. They yeah. do. Um, of course, uh, officials are also trying to um, use the internet to post their own uh, information, um, to post the official version, but they have to respond. Because in this case, the, the, the national conversation was created, yeah. and officials have to respond. And how effective are is, is the ruling party in terms of its use of things like social media and the internet? Well, it's a uh, moving target because the internet is so huge. Uh, information can get out so quickly. And while they try to control it via various uh, devices like uh, blocking, filtering of the uh, certain websites, certain keywords, uh, but information still can uh, get out. But how, how effective are they at the other side of it in posting their own information and having their own information strategies? Um, they do, I must say, they do have some impact because the officials are uh, monitoring the, the conversation very closely. Uh, they also use technology to manage the internet. So it's a constant uh, struggle, constant contention between civil society and the government. Uh, and government also use the intent to do good, for instance. They use uh, uh, mobile phones, short messages to, to distribute uh, uh, information about typhoons, about uh, some emergency information. Public information. Yes, and that's useful too. And you have yeah. officials also uh, launch their own, uh, what we call Weibo, like a Chinese Twitter account. Yeah 
to to have a try to have a dialogue. They're forced to be uh, more accountable and more transparent to the extent that this being effective. And where where are the boundaries or the pain points? What are the things that are particularly sensitive? Well, as broad uh, top areas? official operations are sensitive. Uh, ethnic minority issues are sensitive. Uh, Fulan Gong is uh, a religious cult, is uh, sensitive. So there are areas that um, they are out of bounds that would be deleted automatically. But also it's a moving uh, line. And for reporters, for the public, you, you have to test it before you know what is allowed and what is not. It's a constant boundary, moving what, boundary. What, what is, by, by contrast, how is Hong Kong in terms of numbers of people using the internet and manners of behavior and all of that? Well, internet is also growing in, in Hong Kong. But I have to say, because uh, traditional media is um, uh, not controlled as it is in China, so the impact of internet is less uh, significant in Hong Kong than in China. And what particular things, though, have, has the internet brought to that discussion that might not have been there before? Well, um, the internet is, not, is being used not only as a platform for information discussion, it's also used as a tool for mobilization uh, and, and for also for collective action. I think that's what the officials are most worried yeah. about. So what types of demonstrations have been called together through this use well, of media? Uh, there have been the demonstration of public protests against like uh, building of chemical plants in neighborhoods, uh, injustices in the very in, in, in neighborhoods where the, the police brutality, abuses of uh, power, uh, public power, and to also obscure things like you have an official who appeared in a picture uh, wearing a uh, uh, expensive watch. So people saw it on the internet, people made comments, and then uh, so things happened then yeah. this official. So all kinds of um, uh, you know, uh, information that were posted on, on the internet. It's a very vibrant space. Thank you very much for talking to me today. Okay, thank you.